Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Y with only Fairy-type Pokemon. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only the first Fairy-type encounter in each route or area can be caught, if a Pokemon faints it must be permanently boxed, no items except held items in battle, party Pokemon levels are limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace, and finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. That's right, today we'll be using the very last type that we haven't yet used for our hardcore Nuzlocke's Fairy. Initially introduced in this very generation, Gen 6, predominantly as a way to nerf the overpowered dragon type at the time, there are quite a lot of cool Pokemon with the type and it's grown on me over the years. What's also interesting is that a lot of Pokemon were retroactively given the type from prior generations, almost always making them a better Pokemon. Today we're going to see just how good the type is, and X and Y give us a great selection of Pokemon to work with, although we do have some limitations. First, since we don't use legendaries or mythicals, that will exclude Diancy and Xerneas, the last of which is exclusive to X anyway. Other than that, Slurpuff is also exclusive to X. There are a few tricky encounters that appear on the same route as each other though, so we'll have to find out what we get. Before we begin, I'd just like to note that only 40% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. If everyone watching this video took two seconds to click that subscribe button, it would bring us to our ultimate goal of 200k, so if you enjoy the videos, it would mean a lot if you could do so. Thanks guys, and let's get into the run. Alright, here we go. My third time ever playing through X and Y, and before our last run, it was the Pokemon game I hadn't played in the longest time, so there's still a bit of a learning curve. One thing I'll never understand, though, is this f***ing Fletchling waking me up. Evidently, there's like 18 feet of snow outside that even covers the upstairs window, so would you just let me sleep? Fast forward to our group meeting for world domination, and we get to choose our starter. Honestly, in terms of the rival starter, they're all either weak to fairy or fairy resists them, so I just picked Chespin, so Serena will get Fennekin, arguably the hardest challenge for us. I nicknamed Chespin Holyfield for reasons that will become obvious shortly. Oh hey look, we can get a shaman now. After delivering Professor Sycamore's love letter to our mom, yep, she wants us out of the house immediately. I wonder why. My, what an unexpected turn of events. Yeah, I bet it is. After Serena smacks an innocent Benelby in the face with a heavy metal ball, she gives us some Pokeballs, officially starting our run. Shauna then goes ballistic, seemingly not understanding the concept of Pokeballs, and Serena absolutely slaughters her by saying, Shauna, what do you think your Froakie is inside right now? Get wrecked. Ah, good old Aquacord Town, so beautiful. Wait a minute, is this an unlicensed Pokemon Center? That's it, I'm telling the authorities. Oh my god, would you people leave me alone? I was anticipating a peaceful stroll through the forest, not whatever this is. Near the end of Santaloon Forest, we had a battle with a Pikachu, and on its very first attack, it crit us and got the paralysis. Unlike our second battle in the game. Might as well just give up now, to be honest. In no time, we arrive on Route 3, which is actually the location of our first viable encounter, which ends up being an Azuril, which became normal and fairy in this gen. We catch it successfully and nickname it Navi, and Navi ends up having a naughty nature, plus attack and minus special defense, pretty good. And even more notably, the huge power ability, which is much needed as Azumarill's attack stat is trash without it. The cool thing about catching a baby Pokemon is they're also guaranteed three perfect IVs, so this should be a solid starter for us. Upon arrival in Santaloon City, we have to commit to the difficult task of boxing Holyfield. And no, I didn't bite his ear off. Okay, I just realized how weird this is going to sound to people who don't get the reference. After running around like a madman and using items on Navi like crazy, it turns out we got him to the right friendship level right in time as he evolved into a beautiful peek blue I mean, Meryl. Now, I had purposefully evolved him right at level 10 so that he learned Charm as an Azuril and then gets Rollout as a Meryl, which I think is going to be crucial for the gym. Speaking of which, it's time for the first one, the Santaloon Gym. Turns out, all that effort was worth it as Navi is able to sweep through the trainers with Rollout, although getting poisoned while being locked into a move can be a bit scary. It's time for the first gym leader, Viola, the Bug-type trainer. Without Rollout, I think this would be hopeless, but I'm feeling pretty good with our setup right about now. She leads with a Surskit, and, well, what choice do we have? Get out there, Navi. I make sure to use Defense Curl first, as this actually doubles the power of Rollout if used on the prior turn. However, she did get the speed drop from her second bubble, and our first Rollout just barely didn't take her out. She then used a Potion, though, which means since our power is increasing, we can KO her on the next turn. In comes her second and final Pokemon, Vivalon, which ended up going for Harden before a 240 power, 4x super effective Rollout obliterates her for our first battle. 
That went way, way better than our last run, I can tell you that much. Before we move on, it turns out Viola's sister is impressed by our efforts and gives us the experience share. I'd love to share some experiences with you. <laughs> Route 4 is upon us, and here we have a tricky situation. Yes, there are more viable encounters here, but Flabebe is way more common than Ralts, and this is the only place we can get Ralts, but Flabebe can be found later on Route 7, so I think it's definitely best to delay a bit. At the end of the route, these weirdos talk about the fairy type and how its discovery turned the type system on its head. Well, let's hope the fairy type can do the same to this game as a whole. They also give us the return TM, always a great asset to have for neutral power, especially early game, and because we already know that Navi loves us. Although, that can change. With that, we arrive in the massive Lumio City, one of the most confusing places in any Pokemon game. Let's say hi to the people in this building- Wait, what did he just say? Uh, uh-huh. In Sycamore's lab, we find this elite gamer, and man, this is exactly what I want my streaming setup to look like. Could you imagine? For the first time in any Pokemon game, besides the Professor Oak battle that got scrapped in Gen 1 for some reason, we get to battle the Professor, and he rolls in with all three Kanto starters, which is quite a challenge this early in game, but Navi manages to do a great job doing either neutral or super effective damage on all of them. Afterward, we... pick the best Kanto starter. Sorry, I don't make the rules. In Lumios comes one of the most infamous characters in video game history. This man who says there's a blackout and that we can't go any farther until it's fixed. Liar! Up ahead, we can finally get some Orin Berries, which should be a great help, after which we arrive in Camphrier Town. One of the houses grants us the Thief TM, which should net us some good items off of wild Pokemon, and in the hotels comes another dilemma for us. There's an interesting phenomenon where there are people in the hotel who can trade you an Eevee, however you have to talk to them four times over four consecutive days to prompt the trade, and, well, I have to get this video up for you guys in a reasonable time frame, so I don't think we'll be able to do that. Unfortunately, our next encounter is also blocked off by this giant Snorlax, but this does mean that we get to break into the massive park and palace to steal the pokey flute. Man, if my house doesn't look like this by the time I retire, my life was a failure. Just look at this place! Here we can grab the Cut HM2, which grants us access to more great items. On the way back, we got a new evolution, which kind of surprised me, as we can get a fully evolved three-stage Pokemon at a mere level 18, which is kind of crazy. Azumarill, welcome to the team. It seems this is one of those Pokemon that people confuse as being from the wrong generation. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say it's a Gen 3 Pokemon. Oh, why is it that every time I wake up a Snorlax I get the feeling... This was a big mistake. Turns out that feeling wasn't unwarranted as I had forgot that I hadn't healed and went into this battle paralyzed. Uh oh. Thankfully, he just had Tackle at this point, and Return had enough power to be a 3-hit KO even after his Citrus Berry, with us being left at just 16 HP only because we made it through Paralysis on every move. Whew. At long last, we get to Route 7 where we can finally get another encounter. This is the only place we can get a Spritzy 2, although I don't really have a way to trade Evolve it, and it's a worse Pokemon than Gardevoir would be, so I'm hoping for a Flabebe here, which is a much higher chance in the Purple Flowers anyway, and the plan works as we catch a beautiful blue-flowered one. I name her Ciela, and she has a lax nature, plus defense and minus special defense. I'll take it. Wait a minute, is that the Millennium Eye? Is this Pegasus's castle? Don't worry, Yugi, I'll save you. A long trip to Route 4 nests us our third encounter, the Ralts that we've been waiting for. I tried to catch it in our only heal ball, but it didn't work, so I settled for a luxury ball, which is still pretty cool. Checking it out, and I think we got the worst Ralts of all time. Synchronize ability instead of trace, and a brave nature, plus attack and minus speed. Big, giant, oof. Uh, I'm gonna need to take a seat and process this for a little bit. Good old Gen 6 benches. Nothing like them. Upon reaching level 21, Navi finally learns a physical water move as we get Aqua Tail, which should be a huge improvement over Bubble Beam. Leading into Route 9, we can grab the Rocky Helmet item too, before uncomfortably riding on a Pokemon who has a Rocky Helmet across this mountain's Rocky Helmet as Rhyhorn's Rocky Helmet smashes these Rocky Helmets, when all of a sudden Rocky Balboa comes out of nowhere and smashes the shit out of us. With that madness aside, we enter the Glittering Cave, where surprisingly enough we have another encounter opportunity. 
Yet another Pokemon that was retroactively given the fairy type, Mawile, which also has Intimidate. We catch it successfully and nickname her Tail, and Tail has a relaxed nature, plus defense and minus speed, which is not bad actually since we won't be out speeding much anyway. A long journey brings us to Silage City where the next gym is, but while doing some grinding for it we get two massive team upgrades. First, Neri ends up evolving into a Curlia at level 20, and we also have Ciela evolve into a Floet, both giving us some extra power and bulk. After going rock climbing for a while, we arrive at the gym leader of Silage City, Grant, a rock type trainer, and I think we have a pretty good setup against him if I'm honest. He leads with an Amora, and I send out Navi. Here I was like, ah, Aqua Tail will sweep easily. But we missed, and then he hit us with Thunder Wave. Alrighty then. Thankfully, it doesn't have much coverage against us, but we did stay paralyzed and got hit twice, and he got the attack drop, but amazingly Aqua Tail still does the job in one hit. In comes his second and final Pokemon, Tyrant, and Bite thankfully doesn't flinch, but Aqua Tail does less than half. It seems he's going for a para-flinch strategy here, but we make it through and hit him with return so that we don't bring him into the potion range, and another bite brings us below half, but we miraculously make it through again for the KO and the win. Alright, that was made way more difficult than it should have been, but second badge. North of Silage City is Route 10 where we can get another encounter, but while searching for one, I ran into a horde of nose pass and I was like, alright, that's terrifying, but let's just get out of here. But it turns out one or more of them had the magnet pull ability and we had Tail out. Oh god. This means I can't run or switch and all of Tail's moves are resisted and some of them have sturdy too, so... Essentially, I ended up having to endure two hit KOing five nose pass in a horde battle. Are you kidding me? What is my life? Now we have two possible encounters here, Snubble and Eevee, and I was kind of hoping for Snubble as I do love Granbull a lot, but it ends up being Eevee which I'm also fine with as I don't think I've used a Sylveon before so it should be fun. Since it's not fairy type yet we won't be able to use it in battle until it evolves, but I catch it and nickname it Leaf. Let's check his nature. Adamant. F plus attack and minus special attack. And let me guess, if we had found a Snubble, it would have been modest, right? I spent forever playing with Eevee and Pokemon Ami to raise its affection, which is the method through which it evolves into Sylveon, in addition to having a Fairy-type move, so we'll have to wait a bit. In the meantime, we're able to find the Mind Plate to boost Psychic moves, which should be great for Neri. Route 11 brings yet another encounter for us, and quite an interesting one too, Dedene. We catch it and nickname her Proxy, which I thought fit it pretty well, and Proxy ends up having a Naughty Nature plus attack and minus special defense, which isn't great, although electric coverage will likely be great to have. Up ahead, Sycamore ends up telling us that there's a Mega Evolution Guru we should go to talk to, and wait a minute, this entire time, this whole game, you've been like, go on an adventure to find out more about Mega Evolution. And we've scoured the region, and now you tell us there's a resident expert on it? What the hell, man? Up next is Reflection Cave, which has a couple fairy-type options for us, Mr. Mime and Carbink, and we end up finding a Carbink, officially cutting off Mr. Mime as an encounter possibility. Oh well. I catch it and nickname it Sprite, and either way, since we have a full party, they were gonna go in the box for now. In this cave, we had a terrifying battle against a trainer with a rampaging Grand Bull that could have possibly ended our run, but it ends up being Proxy of all Pokemon that saves us, being able to paralyze it with Nuzzle and then use Parabolic Charge, which does damage and gives us a recovery too, which work quite well in combination with each other. In here, we can also find a Moonstone, which might be important for us later on. Arriving in Shallower City, we can enter this house to talk to this guy, and after going ahead to see a few more encounters, we got to the 40 that he required in order to give us the Eviolite, an amazing item for not fully evolved Pokemon to raise their defenses. At this point, we have a lot of Pokemon near the level cap, so we have to be careful. At the Tower of Mastery, we have a battle with Serena to determine who deserves Mega Evolution or something, and she leads with a Meowstic as I send out Proxy. She uses Light Screen right away, and Parabolic Charge does, like, nothing because of it. After getting hit by Disarming Voice, we hit it with Nuzzle to paralyze, and then I start a long grind of using our Parabolic Charge strategy since we get recovery along with it. Psybeam smashed us below half though, and I kept pushing until her light screen faded with us at 18 HP, and I thought this would tip the balance in our favor, but she made it through paralysis with Psybeam, and we survived on literally 1 HP. Holy, that was close. Here, I can now use Volt Switch though, which takes her down and gives us the pivot. Nice. I send out Ciela here as she sends out Absol, and she just used Quick Attack as Fairy Wind brings her to below half, and then she hits us with Bite, and we flinch. Are you kidding me? Now for some reason, I completely panicked when we got flinched and went for Wish accidentally, and Bite brought us to just 1 HP. 
Oh man, this is too much. Here I switch in Navi, who's able to tank bite and smash it with return for the KO. Our final Pokemon is Brazen, which is why Navi was such a good choice, as one Aqua Tail does the job after a fire spin. However, as I feared, Navi leveled up to level 29, meaning we can't use her until the next badge, which is why I tried not to. But wow, two 1 HP survivals in one battle. Insane. With that behind us, it's time for the third gym, the Shellower City Gym. As a fighting type gym, the trainers were relatively manageable, and Proxy's Nuzzle Strat actually worked quite well against them, even though we don't have a fairy move on her yet. Eventually, since you have to battle all the trainers in this gym, our Pokemon were growing too high a level, so I brought in Sprite from the PC, who was actually pretty helpful with Reflect and Sharpen to raise its attack, so I could actually get some good damage output. The third gym leader is Corinna, the fighting type specialist, and one we still have to be careful for. She leads with a Mianfu, and I stick with Sprite here as our lead. I go for Stealth Rock right off the bat after she used Fake Out and Power Up Punch to raise her attack. Here I use Reflect, but her attack is increasing like crazy. I switch into Neri here with the Eviolite attached, and with Reflect Up we tank her attacks pretty well before going for Confusion to bring her low, and she gets confused. She did use a Hyper Potion here, but we could then hit her again, then she hit herself in Confusion, and because of her increased attack it just KO'd her right away. That works. In comes Machoke next, and Confusion brings it just below half before Rock Tomb hits us hard to 14 HP and drops our speed, so I have to switch here unfortunately. I send in Ciela as she uses Leer to drop our defense, but then just used it again, but Fairy Wind just barely doesn't KO as she uses another Hyper Potion. Another does about a third, and then she uses Power Up Punch. We bring her to the red again, but I'm realizing with Reflect down, our defense lowered, and her attack raised, I have to switch, so I go into Tail for the Intimidate before we finish her off in two attacks. In comes her final Pokemon, Halucha, and at this point, I realized, oh man, I messed up. It's level 32, but the site I referred to while setting up the level caps had her Machoke last, so I accidentally used it as the ace level. Oops. This might make it a struggle, so I switch into Proxy who gets hit by Power Up Punch. She then uses Hone Claws as I went for Volt Switch and we don't quite KO, but from here I can pivot into Tail for Intimidate. Her attack is still a bit higher though, but her Flying Press is resisted, but then her next one gets a crit to bring us to just 9 HP before we KO her. Alright, that was a crazy battle. I made sure to double check the level caps from here on, so don't worry, they're all in order. Now at level 29, Eevee finally learned Charm, and with more Ami time, we finally reached the requirements to evolve it into a beautiful Sylveon, which I'm very eager to try out. On Route 12, this guy talks about how Lapras has surfed him all around, and he's no longer needed, so he gifts it to us. I then go to use Surf, and the Lapras doesn't have it. What in the world? The Kalos region is full of liars, isn't it? After actually giving it the Surf HM, this grants us access to the second part of the route where we can pick up one of the best items in the game, the Leftovers. A small trek brings us to Kumarine City, where one of the kind gentlemen in the houses gives us the Silk Scarf, which should be great to boost return. Right before the gym, Serena challenges us to battle again, and with the buffed up team, this one was pretty easy. As Tail could slam Meowstic with double power payback for the two hit KO, Brazen was destroyed by Navi with Aqua Tail, and Absol was also taken down by Tail with two returns. Not today, Serena. The Kumarine Gym is upon us, a grass type gym, and the type interaction is kind of interesting here. Tail was a great choice though, as she gives us a grass resistance and has great damage output. A long climb to the top of this treehouse thing brings us to the fourth gym leader, Ramos, and I think I have a good plan for his team. He leads with a Jumpluff, one of my favorite underrated Pokemon, as I send out Proxy. Proxy is a great counter on the face of it, but he did outspeed a 101 base speed Pokemon to use Leech Seed before we got the Nuzzle Paralysis off. This was an insanely crazy grind as we got some recovery from both Leftovers and Parabolic Charge, but he got some damage off and recovery from Leech Seed. Ultimately, because he was paralyzed, the balance tipped in our favor, and even through his potions, we pulled it off with Proxy at about half health. In comes Gogo -Go next, so I switch in Tail with Intimidate, but he does have Bulldoze, which is super effective. Regardless, he started using Takedown after 1 though for some reason, so I could start hitting him with super effective Power Punch I taught via TM, and a final hyper-powered return took him down with us at 26 HP. His final Pokemon is Weepin' Bell, so I switch into Neri with the Eviolite to tank Grass Knot and respond with a few super effective Confusions after Acid brought us to a third. 
Definitely a long struggle, but we pulled it off. At the power plant, we face off against a sequence of Team Flare Grunts, and I notice our team's typings are actually quite good against the kinds of Pokemon that they have, although we do have to watch out for poison types a bit. In here, we can also pick up the Zap Plate, which should be a great asset for Proxy. This guy initially blocked us off, but I went around and behind him to the part that he was blocking off to see if he'd say the same thing, and he does. Too good. Now looking ahead to our next challenge, I realized we'd need some buffs, so I went to the shallower Poke Center to grab the Dig TM, which I teach to Proxy for now. While grinding for the next gym, we have an amazing evolution as Neri finally evolves into a Gardevoir, quite an amazing Pokemon, especially now with the Fairy type. I had also waited until Curlia learned Psychic, so that's a massive power upgrade right there. With our team a bit more prepared, it's time for the Eiffel to, I mean, the Lumio City Gym. As it turns out, our preparation paid dividends as Proxy not only resists all the electric types in here, but I could also teach Leaf Dig too, our only method of coverage against Pokemon like this. At level 37, he also learned Moonblast, which is like the first good fairy move we've gotten on any of our Pokemon. A long climb brings us to the top where Gym Leader Clement awaits. His team is scary, especially with a Steel-type Magneton, but I'm hoping for the best. He leads with an Emolga, which is a bit of a challenge for us since his only weakness is Rock and Ice, which we don't have, but I send out Leaf regardless. We get hit with an Aerial Ice before I get a Light Screen off to raise our team's special defense. We get hit to half before Moonblast does massive damage to hit him into the red, and then he Hyper Potions before another brings him low, and then he Hyper Potions again, good thing that we're wasting them now I guess, and two more take him down after we get hit to a third before our berry helped a bit. In comes the big threat, Magneton, right as our light screen wore off. Great. I have no choice and no will outspeed, so I go for light screen again, and with our bulk we actually survive super effective stab mirror shot in the red. Here I switch into proxy, and he actually missed his next attack. I'll take it. Here I can outspeed and hit him with 4 times super effective dig to the red, then he just hit us with Thunderbolt before we could use another to KO him. That went better than expected. His final Pokemon is Heliolisk, and with the help of leftovers we managed to take him down in 2 digs and a cut, being left with less than half in the process. 5th badge, and we got the Thunderbolt TM for winning too. Fantastic. With the other part of Lumios now open we can grab yet another great item, the Expert Belt, to boost the power of super effective moves by 20%. The Eerie Route 14 has us engage in another battle with Serena, and similar to last time, Tail KOs Meowstic in 2 crunches. But in comes her fully evolved Delphox now. I'm sitting here like, ah, Navi's got this, but her Psybeam ends up confusing us. Hmm. Oh well, all we need is one hit, right? But then she crits us on our next attack, and we hit ourselves in confusion down to just 12 HP. I have to switch now, so I send in Leaf, and Mystical Fire lowered our special attack, so I ended up having to use Dig, and thanks to our bulk we survived her attacks on 19 HP before a second Dig took her down. Alright, that was way too scary. Her Absol was then handled by a switch into Ciela with Fairy Wind, followed by a switch into Tail for the Intimidate and Return. No more underestimating her, I guess. The gorgeous Autumn Roots bring us to La Vera City, an ultimately depressing town if I'm honest. So I decide to get the local sense of things around here and... Alright, you know what? Forget I asked. I, I don't even want to know. It's time for the La Vera City Gym, which is full of fairy trainers, which you would think would make things kind of tough on us, but Tail's steel typing helped a lot, even if we have no steel moves. The six gym leader is Valerie, probably one of the strangest but coolest gym leader designs, and her team looks tricky. She leads with a Mawile, so I do as well, and her hypercutter cancels out our Intimidate, ironically enough. Looks like we also have the same thought process as well as we both use Iron Defense. On the next turn, she uses Crunch, and I use Iron Defense again. From here, I essentially start using Power Up Punch with the Black Belt attached to raise our attack like crazy, as I know she can't do much damage even if she gets a Crunch Defense Drop. She does increase her defense a lot and uses two Hyper Potions after getting two Defense Drops on us, but eventually we took her down with Resisted Return with just over half remaining. With a hugely boosted attack, her Mr. Mime was then handled with one return even though she had used Reflect beforehand. Her final Pokemon is Sylveon, and she used Charm to lower her attack, but even with that and Reflect, we're able to do a good chunk of damage, but her Dazzling Gleam brings us to just 16 HP. That was close. After getting her to the red, I switch into our own Sylveon, who tanks Moonblast well before outspeeding and KOing her with our own Moonblast. An interesting battle for sure, but I think we managed well given the circumstances. At this point, ideas are coming to my head again about the possibility of a deathless run, but we'll see. After goofing around on the Pokeball Factory conveyor belts, we reach the factory head who is succumbing to the Team Flare Goons. Come on, man. Have you no balls? 
Route 15 brings us yet another encounter with a 10% chance to find a clef key. I catch one and nickname it Felicia, who I think I'm gonna leave in the box for now. In Anastar City, this girl says, Some people call out of place artifacts like this oop art. Huh. Interesting. Excuse me, are you a type of NFT? The Anastar City Gym is next, a psychic type gym, and... Alright, I think I might have taken one too many. The trainers were manageable, even though we did have a few scary moments like this executor going ham with Woodhammer of all things. Wasn't expecting that at all. In the process, Ciela ended up reaching level 46, where she finally learned Moonblast, which is what I was waiting for all along. Now, using the shiny stone we got from Route 12, we can get our last evolution on our current team, Florgis, which looks like a pretty decent Pokemon based on its base stats. The seventh gym leader is Olympia, and I think I have a pretty darn good strategy to defeat her. She leads with a Sigalyph, and I send out Neri. Basically, my strategy is to Calm Mind as much as possible, raising our special attack and special defense, then have Leftovers hopefully recover most of the damage taken since she only has special moves. She did use Light Scream, but from there I could Calm Mind three times and then instantly KO her with a super effective Thunderbolt I taught via TM. In comes Meowstic, which did get a fake out off, but our Leftovers kind of nullified that, and even after she Calm Minded, Moonblast eviscerates her. Her final Pokemon is a Slow King, and Thunderbolt comes in clutch here again for the one-hit KO. Neri, you are a beast. Ironically enough, after the battle, she gives us the TM for the move that we just used to wipe the floor with her. Touché. The secret basement of the cafe in Lumios is then revealed to us, and Lysander ends up challenging us to battle. Thankfully, at this point, Neri can handle his entire team with ease, KOing Mianfu with Psychic, taking down his Gyarados with 4 times super effective Thunderbolt, smashing his Murkrow with super effective Stab Dazzling Gleam, and finally, his Pyroar did survive a Psychic, but ended up missing both of its Fire Blasts so we could get another off to KO. Our second battle with Lysander in the basement of the lab has a bit more of a challenge with a fully evolved Mien Xiao now, which also happens to crit us with acrobatics before Dazzling Gleam KOs. Gyarados and his now fully evolved Honchkrow went down the same way as before, since the latter thankfully doesn't have Sucker Punch, and Pyroar had to be handled with a switch into Navi due to that earlier crit. I don't anticipate his final battle being so easy. While taking on a ridiculous amount of Team Flare grunts to get to the final room, I realized just how good Gardevoir is against them, taking down their Poison types with our Psychic typing and their Dark types with our Fairy typing. Unreal. This thing was designed to beat them. Upon getting to the final room, the Egg of Doom hatches and unleashes Eveltal upon the Earth. This thing is a wickedly cool Pokemon, and I got so excited that we had super effectiveness that I nearly killed it before realizing I almost did the same thing I did last time. Even if you kill it, the game just kind of resets and forces you to catch it anyway, so there you go, bacon burb. Are you happy now? <laughs> The final Lysander battle is upon us, and I'm a bit nervous for this one if I'm honest, as his team is quite heavily upgraded at this point. He leads with his Mian Xiao again, and thankfully it doesn't get a crit with Acrobatics this time before Psychic takes him down. Honchkrow is then also a one-hit KO with Dazzling Gleam. So far, so good. In comes Pyroar next, though, exactly what I didn't want him to switch in, but I send out Navi here who tanks Fire Blast easily. Another one hits us to half before Aqua Tail is a one-hit KO. In comes his final Pokemon, and the big threat here, Gyarados, which intimidates Navi upon switch-in. With our attack lowered, it's likely risky staying in here, so I switch into Tail to intimidate him back, and then he Mega Evolves into Mega Gyarados. Now this thing is part Dark-type, but he hits us hard with Earthquake even through the Intimidate. I switch into Ciela here, and Earthquake does about a third, but then he outspeeds and hits us with Iron Head. But we survive on just 2 HP before we can hit him with Moonblast, but no KO. Every single Pokemon we have is a risky switch now, and I spent a long time deciding, but ultimately I realized we have to risk it as I switch in Tail again for another Intimidate, hoping and praying he'd go for Iron Head and not Earthquake, and he did, so we survive on just 10 HP. With two attack lowers on him, I'm hoping Neri can now handle this, and Earthquake hits to 50 HP before we can outspeed him on the next turn for the Dazzling Gleam KO. Thank god we were able to bait the Earthquake there. That was a tough one. Up ahead, at a relatively secret entrance to Terminus Cave, we can pick up the Brick Break TM, which should be quite valuable. On the bridge up ahead, we have quite a sequence of battles as three of our rivals all challenge us. I led with Tail first to intimidate their Pokémon each time, and to be able to use Power Up Punch to raise their attack right off the bat. 
Shauna and Tierno were tough as we had to face them consecutively without healing, but ultimately with play rough on Navi now, we ended up getting through them deathless, and Tail also learned Iron Head, which is a great asset for coverage and stab. Before Trevor we got to heal though, so we plowed through him well, with special thanks to Iron Head now making Florges and Aerodactyl much easier things to handle. For winning, we get the Waterfall HM, which is not only great for navigation, but also for Navi for a bit more accuracy at the cost of a bit less power than Aqua Tail. We next arrive in Snowbell City, the location of the 8th and final gym. On our way to find Wolfric, we have to pass through Route 20, which ends up having our final available encounter, a Jigglypuff. I catch one and nickname it Emeralda, and I'm gonna leave it in the box for now as I don't think it gives us much that our team doesn't have already. The final gym is here, and now with access to Iron Head, Tail does an amazing job running through the Ice-type trainers, and we arrive at the final gym leader, Wolfric, quite quickly. Well, aside from his stupid gym puzzle, that is. I ended up teaching the Swords Dance TM to Tail, so against his Obama Snow, which I knew only had resisted moves against us, I got off one before then hitting him with Iron Head for the instant KO. His Cryogonal then got a Confuse Ray off on us, but we made it through to KO as well. Even though it was a little bit risky, I stayed in against his Avalug, and amazingly we pulled through Confusion and got a critical hit Iron Head to take him out as well. He didn't have that much that could hurt us anyway, but crits are always appreciated. All 8 badges acquired. Without any greeting or anything, this lady just says out of the blue, My Pokemon's nickname is Sepultura. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, all right, let me tell you, <laughs> we so, don't care. A long and perilous journey through Victory Road is ahead of us, but first, I've just gotta admire this gate. I mean, it's definitely one of the best in the series. Near the end, we have our final rival battle against Serena, which I nearly forgot about if I'm honest. I decided to approach things a little bit differently here due to her team upgrades. Against her Meowstic, I led with Leaf this time. After Fake Out, we get hit by Psychic, but then I get up a Light Screen. Moonblast then does over half, and she takes us to just above half before another KOs. In comes Delphox now, which I feel like we're finally prepared for as I switch in Navi, but she gets a crit. Are you kidding me? I'm assuming she won't get two crits in a row, so I go for Waterfall, and weirdly enough, she just used Flamethrower anyway, so we take her out. In comes her Jolteon now, so I switch into Neri, who tanks Discharge with the help of Leftovers, and two Psychics take her down with us at a third. Next comes her Altaria, which ended up surviving a Dazzling Gleam in the red, surprisingly. Then she hits us with a crit to the red before Leftovers. Then we can take her down with another attack. Her final Pokemon is Absol, and just to be safe, I switch in Tail for the Intimidate and the newly learned Play Rough KO. With all obstacles cleared from our path, it's time for the final challenge, the Pokemon League. I do tons of preparation with grinding, fulfilling any remaining EVs, get TMs and items that we might need, etc. And with that preparation done, let's do this. The first Elite Four member is Malva, the Fire Trainer. Her team is interesting, and thankfully she has no way to set up the sun. For this one, the choice was obvious as I lead with Navi against her Pyroar. She does have Wild Charge, but her attack stat's not great, and we do have good defense, so I think it's worth the risk. She ends up going for Hyper Voice, though, before Waterfall takes her down instantly. Talonflame comes out next, an absolute menace in Gen 6, and we could even survive a Brave Bird here, but she ended up getting a Crit Flare Blitz instead before our Citrus Berry, then Waterfall KOs. Torkoal is then an easy outspeed and KO with Waterfall as well, despite its high defenses, and then in comes arguably her biggest threat, her Chandelure, but it goes for Confuse Ray, and we hit ourselves. Yikes. I think we're in KO range now, so I have to switch. I go into Leaf here, who tanks a Shadow Ball to two-thirds, and then she uses Confide to lower our special attack before I get a Light Screen up. She then confuses Leaf too, and we hurt ourselves. Ugh. With Light Screen up and the same special defense stat as Pokemon like Lugia and Ho-Oh, I think Ciela is our best bet here, and this works out well as we can KO in two Psychics, although it was super close with us being left at just 10 HP in the end due to confusion. Sheesh. The second Elite Four member is Wickstrom, the Steel-type trainer, and quite obviously this is a big threat for us. I spent a while theory crafting for this battle and eventually came up with what I think is our best plan. Let's try it. He leads with a Clef Key and I send out Navi. I taught Power Up Punch to her so we could raise our attack, and used one after getting hit by Flash Cannon, then got hit to below half before our berry, before a Waterfall then takes him out from there. In comes Probopass next, which has Discharge of all things, but I decide to go for Waterfall, hoping for the flinch, which brings him to Sturdy, before we get hit below half, and he heals. But now, I can take the chance to Power Up Punch a couple more times while he's healing, the third of which KOs him. 
In comes his Scizor next, which I knew we could outspeed as long as he didn't use Bullet Punch, and he didn't, so Waterfall KOs. His final Pokémon is Aegislash, a massive threat for us, but we have one good counter, Tail, who intimidates upon Switch, as I knew he'd use King's Shield anyway. From there, Iron Head does a third on us, but he gets hurt by the Rocky Helmet, then Crunch just barely doesn't KO. Another Iron Head can't quite KO us though, as we're left in the red, and the Rocky Helmet KOs him. Amazing. That was a solid battle. Next up is Drasna, the Dragon-type Elite Four member, and... well, I attached an Expert Belt on Neri and essentially just had her go to work, one-hit KOing all four of her Pokémon with either Psychic or Dazzling Gleam, only getting outsped and hit once by her Noivern's Air Slash, but no flinch. Neri, you legend. The last Elite Four member is Seabull, the Water Trainer, and his team is ridiculously bulky and powerful. But a good plan came to mind. He leads with a Claw Whistler, which is crazy powerful with Mega Launcher, and I lead with Leaf. I attached the Light Clay on him, which we got from using Thief on a Golet, so I use Light Screen, which will now last for 8 turns. He then uses Water Pulse, which doesn't do much, but my worst fear comes alive as he gets the confusion on the first turn. Ugh. From here, I had to struggle trying to get Calm Minds off, but it's not working well as we keep hitting ourselves, but eventually I get one off. Not wanting to risk a crit, I decide to Baton Pass from here to pass the boost onto Neri, who gets hit by Water Pulse upon Switch In, and also gets confused. Why game, why? We then hit ourselves twice in a row, and I'm just losing my mind here, but on the third turn, we finally get a Thunderbolt off to obliterate that damn thing. From there, Gyarados is then a one-hit KO, and the same goes for his Barbarical, and then he sends out Starmie. It does outspeed us and went for Light Screen, and then we can't quite KO before he heals it, and that happens once more before he hits us with Surf to 23 HP, and then we can blast it with one more for the win. Great strategy, terrible luck. It's time for the final challenge in the game, the strongest trainer in the region, the champion, Diantha. And her team is a bit of a mixed bag, which makes it hard to account for. After a long theory crafting session, it's time for the final battle. She leads with a Halucha, so I send out Tail for the immediate Intimidate, and because she does have Poison Jab too. She just went for Swords Dance though, so a hit with Play Rough obliterates her in one shot. In comes Gudra next, which has Fire Blast, so I switch into Navi to tank it, but she missed anyway, and then Focus Blast missed too, so Play Rough takes her down instantly. Alrighty then. In comes Aurorus next, and Waterfall is an immediate one-hit KO on it as well. Her fourth Pokémon is Gorgeist, an interesting threat for us, so I switch back into Tail to intimidate it as she uses Trick or Treat, which makes Tail part Ghost-type. That makes things dangerous, but after the Intimidate, I think we're safe to stay in. I figure she'll likely go for Phantom Force, so I took a risk to use Swords Dance, and she does, which is great because we couldn't have hit it anyway. We then get smashed with Phantom Force to below half as she gets hit by the Rocky Helmet, which allows us to KO her in one crunch. In comes Tyrantrum, which does have Earthquake, so I switch into Ciela, who tanks it well and responds with a one-hit KO Moonblast. Her final Pokémon is a big threat for us, a Gardevoir, but with a trick up his sleeve, and Tails too weak to get an Iron Head off, our only reliable damage method. I stay in here just to try and get a special attack drop off with Moonblast, and after getting hit to just 39 HP, we did get it. Let's go! Ultimately, I decide to go into Leaf here, who gets a special attack drop though, serves us right, then I go for Light Screen after getting hit to half. I then use Calm Mind to raise our special defense, then so we don't risk a crit, I hard switch into Navi, who tanks a Moonblast really well with Light Screen and her lowered special attack. Thunderbolt then brings us to nearly half, but a huge power waterfall slams her, and wins us the final battle. Nice. We did it. A hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Y with only fairy types and our first ever deathless hardcore monotype Nuzlocke. Unbelievable. I can't believe we finally got one. Fairy types are interesting, very hard to get type coverage early on, but as they level up and evolve, they become quite powerful. Oh, we also taught AZ how to catch a 3000 year old fairy type of his own, and we all lived happily ever after. I hope you had fun with the run, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really helps a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoy, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.